Hey, hi and welcome to the Waterbrook Online. I'm the Reverend Dr. Pete O'Dara right here with another episode in our series, Possessing the Gates. Possessors of the Gates. Um, today we're going to look at a topic. Uh, my, my topic is gold emerging from the purging, emerging from the purging, uh, emerging from the purging. You know, gold is very rarely found on the surface. Gold is very rarely found on the surface of the, uh, the ground. It has to be dug. Uh, but my, my thing I always say to people, uh, a, a lump of gold and a golden ring, which has more value? And the one that has more value is obviously the one that is in shape. Stay with me as we look at this interesting topic today of emerging from the purging, gold. Stay with me. Welcome back. I'm so glad you're staying with us. Uh, Job chapter 23 verse 10 and the scriptures reads as follows. It says, but he knows the way that I take. When he has tried me, I shall come out as gold. But he knows the way that I take. When he has tried me, I shall come out as gold. Job 23 verse 10. He's understanding something there. Uh, Malachi chapter 3 verse 1 to 3. Let me read that. Behold, I will send my messenger and he shall prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom ye seek shall come suddenly to his temple, shall suddenly come to his temple. Even the messenger of the covenant whom ye delight in. Watch this. Behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts, but who may abide the day of his coming? And who shall stand when he appeareth? For he is like a refiner's fire and like a fuller soap. And he shall sit as a refiner and a purifier of silver. And he shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver, that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. Uh, it's very interesting uh, about where we are right now. We've just come through a contentious election in Kenya, uh, where there's extreme polarization of views, uh, but mainly, you know, um, it's it's revealed that it's a, it's been an election of haves and have-nots. Uh, but I really don't want to talk so much about the election because it can't just be about elections. Um, I want to go a little deeper. Um, and, and really begin to talk to the believer, talk to the person who calls himself a Christian, to really begin to interrogate how we are, where we are, and what it is that the Lord is really doing with us, not just as individuals, and not just as Kenyans, but as the body of Christ, not just in Kenya, but in general. Uh, because one of the things I've noticed across the world, around the world, is now um, an erroneous uh, advocation for Christian nationalism. We've seen it in the United States. We're definitely seeing it here, uh, which is really a fascist idea. Um, and and it's, it's actually not just an, um, an erroneous idea. It's actually dangerous. Uh, I say that it's dangerous because what it immediately does is it excludes people who are not like you. It says that you are the people who are, are, are carved out to lead. If you look at history uh, and if you look at the scriptures, this is not the case. It's not the case. In fact, um, I know that many people were before the election was saying that you need to vote for this particular candidate or that particular candidate, uh, especially because it was viewed as, uh, as though uh, uh, so-and-so was saying this or the other person was saying the other. Uh, and we, we've tried to create our candidates, whether at the gubernatorial level or at the, especially at the presidential level, as being uh, as being anointed of the Lord. This is what the Lord has said. But let me show you something that's very interesting. Uh, if you read Revelations chapter 2, verse 13, uh, notice what the church at Pergamum was being told. He says, the Bible says, I know where you dwell, where Satan's throne is, yet you hold fast my name. And you did not deny my faith, even in the days of Antipas, my faithful witness, who was killed among you where Satan dwells. In other words, this was a church 
that was existing at Satan's throne. Can you imagine that? Satan's throne. The church at Pergamum thrived even where the enemy had his throne. It thrived where he had his throne. They held on to the faith. And, and this is the, the thing about it is, is this, is that um, as a church, this is not just a, a Kenyan thing. We, we've seen it in um, Hungary, in Kenya, in, in the US, and to some degree, even in Australia. We're struggling to get secular influence because we have no spiritual relevance or maturity. Uh, this is what's happening. Uh, when, you, when you lose spiritual relevance or maturity, your secular voice begins to be drowned out. And this is an important place that we're at, that we, we really have to, we have to look hard and deep at ourselves so that we're not erroneously going into a space. And, and okay, so your candidate wins and so on, but how is the kingdom of God advancing? The earth, the Bible continues to say in Romans chapter eight, the earth is groaning for the manifestation of the sons of God, the sons of God. And if you look at, the, and this is what I found, the history of, of, of so-called Christian presidents, whether in West Africa or in, in Central Africa, Zambia, Malawi, uh, and other countries. Uh, those countries, in fact, the truth is after the Christian presidents, I'm sorry to say, after the Christian presidents were done, the countries were not better off. What God is looking for is not Christians by name is not people who just pray in tongues. What God is looking for is not this namby, pamby, weakling, easily shifted kind of church. That's not what a possessor of the gate is described as. Possessor of the gate, church is not a place. Church is not a place. Church, it's the people, not the place. The people that are in the place, that's who makes the church. And I want us to begin to understand that what the the Lord wants us to be is the possessors of the gate. And the possessors of the gate are going to have to be a different caliber of church. Not people who are seeking to get their own way because their candidate made it so they can uh, advance the agenda, but who's ag who understands the agenda of the kingdom and can then advance the kingdom of God by posturing themselves in the right way. I believe what the Lord is doing uh, is allowing a season of purification to allow this church to emerge. This kind of church, the church that's at Pergamum, the kind of people who are not going to be swayed, the kind of people who are gonna come out and come out and be possessors at the gate. Now, I've said this before, uh, there's a teaching that has gone out. I don't have time to go into it right now because that's not the, my subject. It's the seven hills. And the seven hills is based on, and the Lord spoke to me uh, about this thing, what, maybe 15, 20 years ago, uh, concerning the seven hills and it's become you know people who have established the ministries based on that that kind of teaching but uh, the Lord revealed the seven spaces in which um, the earth the what I call the cosmos has been arranged but there's something that goes further than this a, a deeper understanding of it which is the 12 gates the 12 gates those are the spaces that the Lord wants us to possess he wants us to possess so I believe that what the Lord is doing is he's preparing a church that will come to possess those gates I'm not talking about perfect people that's not what I'm talking about I'm not talking about perfect people but people who have been through some fire, through some fire, the fire of purification, through trials, through failure. Uh, God, God is raising that kind of, this won't be a beauty or popularity contest because the truth is even what I'm saying now, there are some people who are just gonna write it off because it doesn't jive with their brand of Christianity or politics. I want to say that neither, that's neither here nor there. The reality is this, the kingdom of God is advancing and God is emerging God is bringing a church to the surface that will not support your candidate, that will support the candidature of Christ. The, 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 the kingdom of God will, will bring, God is trying to bring his kingdom forward. And, and because of our politics, we're hindering the kingdom of God um, because there are people who are lost and want to know Christ and are waiting to be embraced by the kingdom of God, but we're a hindrance. We're a hindrance. Can you imagine that? That the church then becomes a hindrance because of our bad behavior, because of our partisanship. It is important for us to not be partisan so that we can then be able to take a position of the kingdom of God. Um, but that's not what this message is about. Remember, we are, we are, and I've, I've called this subject gold, emerging from the purging. 
the what I believe is actually happening is um, is a purging of the church. What we have been accustomed to is is a carnal, silly understanding of what the kingdom of God is. The kingdom of God is not in your church. It's not in your church building or your denomination. That's not where the kingdom of God is. The kingdom of God transcends denominations. The kingdom of God transcends buildings. The kingdom of God transcends language and race barriers. The kingdom of God transcends all barriers and is able to manifest in spaces where the church cannot or does not go. The church has been really taking a beating. I mean, if you think about it and, you know, just come out of your constituency, come out of your, your space and move to the place where you have real understanding of what's happening globally. Watch the news just a little bit and you'll see that the church globally has really been taking a beating through the multiple scandals. I mean, there are scandals in Australia, scandals in, 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 um, in Europe, uh, in England, scandals uh, in, in the US, scandals in Africa. You know, we also have had persecutions in North Africa and in the Middle East, per extreme persecution in some places. Um, and then the emergence of great false teachings, false teachings that have completely, I mean, if you're in Africa, you don't even have to try. You can switch on your TV and find a false teacher on national TV teaching with great confidence, but it's false teaching, false prophets. So this has, this has been allowed. What I believe has happened is the Lord has allowed this to purge the church so that the true church will emerge. And you could be scratching your head, I don't know how this, how, how is it? Doing? He is God and he's, what the Bible says, he says that the gates of hell shall not prevail over the church. I know we don't like or understand this line of thinking, but that's the, the gates of hell. He said, he said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. But the truth is this, if you've read the scriptures closely, he allows for purging to come. In fact, if you read just from what we've done in the first two, three chapters of uh, Revelations, you can begin to see this, that there's a purification. So the scandals, what the scandals have done, uh, being these being revealed globally, what it's done is it's demanded of the church a purity of the preachers uh, and a uh, an a high, it's, it's demanded that uh, we, we go, we preach or we speak or we carry ourselves at a higher level, at a higher level of transparency and accountability. The intense persecution in some countries by ISIS, Boko Haram and so on and other entities, uh, a, a lot, that, that has required that only true believers, only truly committed believers will be going to be seen and to proclaim themselves as believers because everybody else who's, you know, like sort of just coming along to just go to church and, you know, do the thing, you know, if you're faced with with, uh, with AK-47s and, and swords and you're asked to repudiate your faith and it wasn't solid, the reality is the true believer will come out. Uh, and that along with the uh, false teachings and, and the prophets that are they're on our continent, uh, they're part of the, that's just part of the purging so that we're not led astray, we're not led away. The true and pure church, believe it or not, shall emerge out of all of this. It shall emerge out of all of this. Um, don't ask me how, don't ask me how, <laughs> you know, um, because God knows what he's doing. But part of the how, I think, is that the true church will begin to separate, will just, it's just a sifting, it's a sifting to begin to separate itself. What the Lord is looking for, what the Lord is looking for, believer, is gold. He's looking for gold. A church that will come out with weight. A church that will come out with substance and free of dross, free of the impurities of lies and, and hypocrisy and full of the love of God and the true quality of what gold truly is. He can say, in fact, what we can say is he is in the mining process now. This is uh, kind of like a uh, pro prophetic instruction, uh, instructional video, if you like. God is in the process of mining now. He's in the mining process right now. He is digging the earth, looking in the earth the, uh, the, to find the ore that has been covered by dirt of generations, by the dirt of pollution, by the dirt of the many things that he's digging. He's looking for the strata that has the potential to be something of worth, to be something of worth. So I'm gonna say a couple of things that I think, uh, I hope will help you to really understand what, what is going on. So the first thing that I wanna talk about, 
uh, now that I've done that preamble. Um, and, 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 and really, this is not just about politics. It's really about who the church really is. What's the quality of the believer? So if he is mining, because mining, if we're looking for gold, if God is looking for gold, he says, and he shall purify the sons of Levi, that they may offer an offering. He shall purify them as a purifier of silver and gold. Now, you'll understand that, you know, you don't just walk out and find gold on the street or on the, in the field. It's very rare that on occasion that there's a field where there's a, a gold nugget and it's just on the surface. Uh, on the surface. You, you really have to mine for it. So there's a digging and a breaking of the surface of the earth to reveal the precious ore. And so let me begin by saying there are several modes of mining. And I'm going to use these as a metaphor to tell you what I believe that God is doing. Number one, there is alluvial mining. Alluvial mining. And alluvial mining involves water uh, running over and over bits of rock. So, you know, they go and take, usually by a riverbed or something, they take this, they take these pans and they take this um, soil that has some uh, potential of being full of gold and they take it and they put it in a tray and they filter it it's a, a sieve and they sieve it and they filter it and they allow the water to go and the water to go and until you begin to see the small grains of flecks of gold until that is revealed in the same way I want to say that there are people who have been under a regime they've been under a regime of the word because a regime let me say of the world that has been flowing over and over and over them for a long time so the word the, the Bible says uh, um, in chapter 5 of Ephesians, they have been purified by the washing of the word. And it's really talking about the bride of Christ who's been washed by the regime of the word, by the purifying of the word. They have stayed, these people have stayed under the teaching of the word for long periods such that it has filtered out the philosophies and thinking of the world. The word has taken precedence. Now, uh, and now the small specks of gold are being revealed. You find people who've been under that teaching, under the teaching of the word, under the teaching of the word, and, and it's the water and the water is running over them. You find some of these amazing saints in out of the way places, not known to the masses. They have been washed by the water of the word and now gold is beginning to emerge. So God is in the business of mining through alluvial means. The second way is through leaching. This, this type of mining uh, is very interesting. And it involves getting heaps and heaps of soil and um, the soil with the gold inside the ore is, is now poured into tanks and um, acidic chemicals are poured into poured into it. So when the, they call it uh, cyanate, so when the cyanate is poured into these tanks, uh, the chemicals are put inside and the process removes all the impurities and leaves the gold in the tanks. So it's a filtering process. It, it's labor intensive and highly corrosive labor intensive and highly corrosive. In the same way, there are some people who've gone through a process that has had the, their reputations corroded. It has involved dangerous attacks that have been acidic, but they have survived. Acidic attacks on them, acidic attacks on them. The Lord is bringing these to the surface in this season. People who have leached through all the impurities of the world and have come out as pure gold because they've been put under the regime of the harsh treatment that the Lord has allowed in this season. The Lord is bringing these to the surface. And then there is drilling. There's the those who are being drilled. This is the mining that most of us are familiar with. The thing about gold mining of this nature is that the mines tend to be very deep. If you ever travel to South Africa, you go to Kimberley or any of the places that are famous for gold mining. In fact, they call the place Igoli, the land of gold, the land of gold. The mines tend to be very deep. You don't just find it, you know, at the surface. It's dark and it's hot and full of intense pressure. And it's also very dangerous because sometimes the mines collapse. There are people who have come through a season of intense pressure, intense darkness, because what they had was buried deep, was buried really deep inside. And when, and when they open their mouths, you hear a depth in what they say that is unusual. They won't be quoting regular scripture, but have a deep understanding uh, of the word and the mind of God. It's because God drilled for them in the deep 
dark places where there was heat and pressure. Some of these guys have gone through the heat and pressure of life. You can't beat the word of God out of them with a baseball bat. They are bad mama jammers. They will take the heat, they will take the pressure, and they will speak. And when they speak, gold emerges, gold emerges. And I, I, I think this is important for us to, to see and to, to understand that there are people like this. And then, and then there's those who've, those who've come through the other process, um, which is open cast mining. So there's drilling and then there's open cast mining. And this is a, a, a kind of mining that, that open cast mining, it, it involves a lot of blasting. Open cast mining, if you've ever been to Zambia, if you've ever been to some parts of Congo, there's open cast mining. I, I like, it's like a huge hole that sometimes, you know, almost a kilometer wide. I mean, there's huge holes that's I mean, acres upon acres of white hole that has just been dug. And, and it involves, open cast mining involves now planting dynamite and other explosives to reveal the strata. And there's blasting to reveal the strata has, that has the gold ore. And then once it's been revealed, they begin to dig it and mine it out. There are people who God has blown away all of the exterior. All of the exterior, there are no pretensions to these guys, all of the exterior to reveal the strata of what he planted. So there's some people, all the stuff that they had was blown away. Some of these people have lost everything that they've owned, everything that they owned. They went through the, the great, I mean, they were just great, everything, just blown away. Everything they owned or acquired, including, lost and including and not limited to marriages, businesses, even children, blown away. And as a result, they are golden people. They are people who have, they have nothing to lose because they own nothing. They own nothing. Even the stuff that they have, they've given to the Lord. There's a givingness and there's men and women of God, some of who um, have begun to emerge, who you want, where did this person come from? I mean, why? Because no, this person seems like he's got no, the world has no hold on them. The Lord is beginning to reveal these, the people who've come through this open cast mining thing. God is in the business of purging this. He's in the business. And so maybe you're in that space and, and God was drilling for something. Maybe you're in that space and, and, and God was, was leaching, pouring some chemical in, chemical of it. Maybe God was just, and you just kept drowning in this constant barrage, constant barrage of, of water that keeps seeming to drown you, but what God was trying to bring out was the golden flex that you are now displaying. Let me help you believe a child of God. This season, the, the world is crying for solutions, whether you're in politics and a national or even global scale. Every crisis, I mean, we've gone through a period where, I mean, there's everything is on the, I mean, Almost all the major areas, there's borderline, everything is, I mean, it's like everything is waiting for a world war to emerge. And we need wise, deep, wise people who have intense and deep knowledge of the mind of God to bring solutions to these things, to bring solutions to these things. Because every other system is failing. So we need to understand that the Lord is revealing these people. And so once, and, and remember it's a process. Remember we're talking about, what did we see? The one whom you seek shall come suddenly into his temple, into his tabernacle, even the carrier of the covenant, and he will come. But who may abide the day of his coming? And who shall stand when he appeareth? For he is like a refiner's fire and a full of soap. For he will purify the sons of Levi, that they may offer an offering. They will he will purify them like a refiner of silver and of gold. So that means that the next, he talks about purifying. The modern word we like to use is smelting, it's smelting. So he won't just mine it, he will now bring it in and then he will smelt it. So once the gold flecks have been found, he will begin to smelt it. And the purpose of, because smelting of course, you know, involves heat. So in order to do anything, it involves heat. The purpose of smelting firstly, is to separate the gold from the dross, dross. So dross, the gold and the dross, the dross is the foreign matter, the dregs or the mineral waste. Uh, in, in, and sometimes in particular, it's that scum that's formed on the surface of a molten material. In fact, if you've, if you've ever watched uh, gold being smelted or silver, you find that something now comes to the surface when the heat is applied and it starts going to the sides, starts going to the sides. The dross must be removed in order to reveal the true value of the gold because the gold must be purified. 
So it is important in this heating time that we begin to understand that it's getting hot. It's getting hot for some people. It's getting really hot. And the fact that it's getting hot means that the dross is being removed. So the dross of false teaching, the, the dross of wrong motivations, the dross of hypocrisy, the, 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 the dross of, of, um, of, uh, of cheap th thrills in Christianity, just this, you know, Easy, what I call easy believism. All of that is being removed. It's being removed because it's hard. Listen, in the new generation that's coming, the generation uh, Z, generation Y and Z, these guys are not pushovers. When when generation Z and Y and Z come and you have to face them with uh, the message of, of, of the gospel of the kingdom of God, the gospel of the kingdom of God to generation Z and generation Y, you really have to do, do your homework. You really have to do your homework. You can't have this namby-pamby, oh, easy believism. You've got to give them a reason. And it's because they come through something as well and you need to prove through your entire life become a living epistle with actual evidence actual evidence not just head knowledge but evidence of the power of god to transform lives and do what the word of god says that it does so the first purpose of smelting is to remove the dross the second purpose of smelting the second purpose of smelting is to prepare the gold into a form that is easy to shape so the first is to remove the dross. The second purpose of the smelting is to create a shape that is easy to shape. Easy, easy to shape. Smelting involves fire. And so the heat makes it malleable so that you could put it into a, a shape. Job was saying in Job 23 verse 10, he was saying that he is aware that what is going on in his life, and if you remember what was going on in his life, there was all these completely impossible trials that were in his life. It seemed like God had abandoned him, but he was aware that what was going on through is, is what he was going through was similar to a smelting process to a smelting process i need you to get this because we've we're in a generation that likes anesthesia but job was saying that he is aware that what he's going through you surrendered your life to god and what you're now going through seems to be you didn't have this kind of craziness when you were not born again when you didn't when you weren't serious with the things of the lord your life was easy what about this thing? What he's saying is that there, he, there's a process. Malachi was saying in chapter 3 that there's no true ministry without the fire. The one whom you seek is coming through the fire, through the fire. It would seem that somehow our generation has missed the memo uh, about the fire. Our, gen our generation missed the memo about the fire. Um, because we, we've, we've become accustomed to anesthesia to painkillers and an easy life, we, we have, uh, in fact, we have associated that with the Christian life. Anesthesia, easy life, and so on. No, no, no. It's not the case. Listen, let me tell you, becoming a believer is one of the most difficult things. Now, I know that, man, I know that um, there's a teaching that says you're blessed and that's the truth. There's a blessing with it. There's, there's a blessing that comes that God can and does prosper you. God does all these things. But the case in history, through history and in the rubric of the scripture, tells us something else. If you stand for Jesus, you will be hated. Nobody likes being hated. If you stand for Jesus, you'll be hated. You'll be the odd one out in the crowd. And if we're preaching a kind of gospel that makes us fit in, then the reality is that's not the gospel of Jesus Christ. Man, I'm not, I'm not preaching a gospel that talks about um, a kind of sadistic gospel that we must be going to look for pain. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that pain is part of the process. Persecution is part of the process. That, that uh, in fact, it's written into the DNA of the believer that challenges will come. Challenges will come. Challenges will come. And, and I, I, don't say this, I don't say this lightly. Um, we are currently, you know, right now as we speak, there are people in parts of the world that are undergoing the kind of persecution that you would not believe. Threatened with death, business and licenses being revoked only because they identify as believers. Identify as believers in the world that we live in right now. In the world that we say there is so-called freedom of speech. In the world where we say there is uh, 
uh, a lot of relativism and postmodern ideology. In this same world, there are people who are persecuted for the ideas in Christ. Why? Because the idea of a risen Christ is powerful and the enemy knows it and he has his agents in the world who are wittingly or unwittingly persecuting the truth of the gospel, the truth of the gospel. So um, take, take heart. God is bringing you to a place where the fire, the fire is bringing you to a space where you can be shaped. It's removing the impurities from your life, but it's also bringing you to a place where you can be shaped, which is the next thing that God wants to do, is shaping. It's not all bad news. Listen, it's not all bad news. Don't, don't get me wrong. There's a shaping that the Lord does. God can shape you. And I, I am a witness to this, that the Lord will take you when you're the raw material and shape you and make you into an amazing, amazing, amazing quality person. Allow the Lord to shape you. Allow the Lord to shape your gift. The Bible says, and the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self control. The world needs the fruit of the Spirit. How, how badly does the world need people who are full of love? The world needs joy. The, oh, the world so needs joy. The, the world needs peace. The world needs a lot of patience. Just sit in traffic for 15 minutes, you see what I mean. The world needs patience. The world needs kindness. It needs people who are kind. It needs gentleness. The world so badly needs faithfulness. There's so many unfaithful people, not just in marriage, but unfaithful in everything. Doesn't the world need self-control? Because some people just lose it in the middle of the mall, lose it in the middle of traffic, just lose it. Self-control, baby, self-control. The world needs, the, the Bible continues to say, and I say this over and over, Creation is waiting for the manifestation of the Son of God. What are the sons of God manifesting? The gold that is the fruit of the Spirit. This golden fruit that is the fruit of the Spirit. Oh, God wants us to demonstrate the fruit of the Spirit. Not just the gifts of the Spirit, the fruit, the fruit. So he needs you to be shaped. He's shaping you, he's shaping you. And this shaping involves surrender. It involves surrender, wow. It involves surrender. So, so God is asking you to surrender. God is asking you to surrender, surrender your will. And um, I think because God, God called me to a, a certain kind of ministry early in my life, uh, a ministry that involved an apostolic pushing and a prophetic sort of piercing into spaces that were uh, previously un, un, um, um, not generally known to be Christian, God called me to that space in a kind of apostolic sense. Um, I was so used to fighting and fighting for my space that uh, when the Lord began to change, he's, he's teaching me more recently how to sort of not force your way into things, but allow him to open doors for you. And there's a significant difference. And when that shift comes in your life, you need to understand when to surrender and when to push. And so that's the trick to have that kind of discernment. And, and so this kind of thing, it takes time. It takes time. Some of these things take time and it takes patience and it takes practice. So as, as your gift is being brought to the marketplace, as your gift is being brought to the forefront, you, you need to take time with it. If it's a musical gift, take time with it. Uh, give yourself to it. Uh, it takes patience, um, you know. You know, you're, there's, there's a lot of people who now, because there's, there's all these platforms where people can suddenly make it, you can, your thing can go viral. Your thing can go viral, but viral can kill you, baby. Viral can kill you. There's people who, when their stuff went viral, their life completely discombobulated. What I'm trying to get you to understand, you've got to be ready for that space. And I've taught about it in a previous episode that you can be qualified, but completely unprepared. So it takes time. Allow the Lord the time to prepare you for the, the place that he's taking you so that you don't get to that international platform and you're completely unprepared. It takes patience. And to me, this is one of the gifts that I think, one of the fruit of the spirit that is amazing. God wants patience. And uh, I, I don't know, I, you know I, why, why do you want patience so much, Lord? And, and you know, you, you wonder, why do you want patience so much? But it's because it's part of his character. It's part of his character. And you may find that in, a, in, in the life to come, that patience changes into something completely 
precious in the life to come where it, it's like the jewels in your crown. You know, and, and in fact, there's an allusion to this in, in the scriptures if you read um, through Thessalonians. And practice. You need to practice. You need to practice, keep practicing, keep working on your gift, working on your gift. Not just your, your spiritual gifts, but also your natural gifts. So if God puts you in the creative space, that you need to put some practice into it. If God makes you, uh, brings you into the space of uh, being an accountant, you need to just give, give, good, give, give good service. You know, uh, I recently was watching um, a documentary about an investigation that people are doing into the big four um, accounting firms in the world, the, big, the top four accounting firms in the world that uh, they're part of, that part, this documentary was revealing that uh, they're part of a huge scam that has caused the falling of companies like Wirecard and, and the Lehman Brothers and so on, who are being audited by some of the big four. It's important for us to be able to do our work, not just, a, not just do your work, but do it with excellence, do it with integrity, do it with honesty, so that by the time you emerge, people look at it and say, this is golden. The more precious gold is the shaped one, not the lump of ore. And if you find an ore of, of gold and a lump somewhere on the street or wherever it is that you find it, yay, good for you. But the more precious one is the one that has been shaped. It has greater value because work has been put into it. You see, um, this year we're celebrating 25 years of marriage and my ring has a date on the inside, which is the date is the 13th of December, 1997, the year that we got married. It cost us what it cost us because it had been shaped. It wasn't just a lump of gold, it had been shaped. So work at shaping your gift. Work at allowing the Lord to shape your character. Work at allowing the Lord to make you into something special. He'll make you something. In fact, the Bible says he makes all things beautiful in his time. If you will give the Lord his time, he will make you beautiful. If you will give the Lord his time, he will make you something great. If you give the Lord, surrender your life and give him his time, he'll make you into something that you will not believe. But here's the last thing that I want to say about this, and that is, once your gift has been shaped, it needs to be packaged. There is a need to package you and your gift, because you know, um, it's being presented to the world. The reality is this, is that if you're God's masterpiece, and the Bible calls us his workmanship, if you're God's workmanship, you're being presented not just to God, you're being presented to the world. You're being presented to the world. And one of the reasons believers are not accepted in the marketplace is poor packaging. We sometimes come and just package ourselves poorly. We, we believe that you go to the corporate boardroom and everything is repentance because that's the only prism that we've seen. It. You, so you walk into the boardroom and you qualify to get into that space and all you say is, all of you need to repent. Not knowing that maybe the people in the room are also believers. Maybe, maybe. Because not everything is about repentance. Hear me well, not everything in the kingdom of God is about repentance. Some things are about redemption. Some things that have to be redeemed or taken back taken back. So not everything is repentance. Don't just go and use the one tool you know, the evangelism tool, that you use it in the boardroom. That's not all there is. There is redemption. Some things need to be redeemed. God gave me a redemptive ministry in trying to recover the ministry of music in Kenya so that it can be brought back into the kingdom of God. That's redemption. Others, some other things are about reconciliation. The Bible talks about it in Corinthians and talks about a ministry of this ministry of reconciliation. In fact, it's uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 talks about he has given us, we are now like ambassadors and has given us this ministry of reconciliation. So there are some things that uh, in some areas is where we have to bring reconciliation and still others about return we must return some things that were lost and these are all ministry aspects of the Lord's work on the cross the cross brought us to a place of repentance it brought us to a place of reconciliation a place where we can return to the father and all of this all of these are works of the Lord's ministry so your packaging is important. And, and so as you go into the boardrooms, as you go into the international platforms, as, as you go into the factories, as you go into the banking halls, uh, please understand what your assignment is when you're there because the Lord has, has need for you to be packaged so that now you come as a solution giver. I, I've, I've said this before, creation is groaning, waiting for the manifestations of the sons of God. So you need to come as a solution giver. So this is what the Lord is doing. The Lord is doing this. 
So I need you to understand this thing. God is looking for gold. My brother, my sister, God is looking for gold in your life. God is looking for gold and he desires for you to become something of wonder to everybody else. I finished where I finished last time, which is Matthew 5, 16. And Matthew 5, 16 it says, let your light so shine before men that they will see your good works and give glory to your Father which is in heaven. God wants you as gold so that your good works will be of great reputation for the Lord, not just your reputation, His reputation, so that people will see and say, surely God is with you. God is creating gold, emerging from the purging. God is desirous that you will emerge from the purging as pure gold. The Lord bless you as you meditate on these things. Allow me to pray. Father, thank you for the opportunity that we've had to hear what you're saying to the people of God in this season. I'm praying that Lord God, you release to us a space where we are able to not just uh, understand, but process these things so that we can emerge from this season of purging. That will not be dismayed when we see the falling away of even great preachers, even pastors who we respected very much. That will not be dismayed when we see the persecutions. That will not be dismayed when we see the false teachers. But that these things must happen and that it's part of the purging so that we will emerge as gold in these last days. Help us, Jesus, to understand what our assignment is, that we will come out as true and pure gold. In Jesus' name. The Lord bless you. I'm the Reverend Pete Modera. Thank you for staying with us all the way until the end. I'm so glad that you're here. Uh, I really, really, really be blessed if you did something for me, if you share this with somebody. There's somebody who's been going through a purging, somebody who's been going through that mining, somebody who's going through the shaping, somebody who's been packaged, and they need to understand that God is at work, that in the end, he's bringing out a beautiful craft. So be encouraged, my brother, my sister, God is at work. Share this with somebody who might need this thing because they may be feeling like they're discouraged so that they can be encouraged. So thank you for staying with us for that. But I'd like to also thank you for allowing us to be in this place. We're recording this at the boardroom of the Kofisi offices in Karen. My office is upstairs, but this is the boardroom, a lovely place, and it doesn't come for free. But they've been such a blessing and accommodated us here in order that we might bring this to you. So thank you for supporting us in this way. And you've been supporting us financially. The Lord bless you. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 10 that he who receives a prophet in the name of the prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. He who receives a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. So it's true, Jesus has said these things and it means that it's absolutely true. So thank you for being a blessing to us. I pray that it will be a blessing to you. Continue to support us if you don't know how to support us. There's two main ways. Number one is you can uh, support us through your bank. You can put a standing order in your bank account to support the Waterbrook Ministry or you can give a one-time gift through the bank and our bank account is held at Stand Big Bank Kenya Limited, Stand Big Bank Kenya, and uh, the account name is Waterbrook Ministry. Our account number is 010286-7596. I'll say that again. So our bank is held at Stand Big Bank Kenya, Kenyatta Avenue branch, and the account name is Waterbrook Ministry, and the account number is 010286-7596. Or you can send us a gift through your mobile money platform, which is M-Pesa. And our M-Pesa number is 345 345-086, 345-086, 86 It's a pay bill, and when the account number comes up, put your name or your reason for giving, and the Lord will bless you because that's what he's promised. So thank you for staying with us right here on the Waterbrook Online. I'm the Reverend Dr. Peter Dara. Remember, God is gonna bring you out as gold. See you next time.